In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I greet you with the blessings of this great, joyous, and wonderful feast. My brothers and sisters, it's, it's really a tragedy today that our people here in America don't really pay attention to the feast days. Uh, they do themselves a great injustice by thinking it's not important that we celebrate them, or it's not important that we understand what's going on when we celebrate these feasts and what the meaning of these feasts are. Because it's only when we participate and when we read and meditate on the feast itself, it is only through that that we gain a deeper understanding of what it is that we believe and how wonderful a God we have who loves us so much that he has done all of this for us. It's sad that we as a people here in a, a land that, it, it hurts me to say this, but I'm going to say it, in a land that was once blessed, but I don't think it's blessed anymore. Uh, we have very little difficulty <clears throat> pondering things that are earthly minded. But we have a great, great difficulty in pondering things that are heavenly. And unless we start pondering the things that are heavenly, our life here is going to be superficial. It's through Christ, through his church, which he has established for us, and which he gives to us freely and lovingly, that we will be able to journey this earthly life to arrive at the court of the heavenly kingdom, and be accepted by the Lord, and receive the inheritance that he has promised to each and every one of us who believe. And if you need a reminder of what God has said to us concerning this, he says, and what awaits us, the eye has never seen, the ear has never heard, nor has it ever entered into the heart of man what God has prepared for those who believe in him. So for you who are here, you have my greatest admiration and respect. For those that aren't here, you have my sincerest prayers that as time goes on, you will be encouraged to begin thinking of things heavenly. And if it's impossible for you physically to be here, that at least in your homes, you will offer the prayers of the feast, and you will do some reading concerning the feast, to have that, not that shallow pool, but a, but a deeper, deeper lake of faith that will sustain you and I in our life. All of that being said, let us look at what's being said here. First, we're going to take it from the perspective of the apostles. We are told, well, I'm going to do a reminder first. If you remember after Christ was crucified, everybody fled. And actually, the only apostle was there was John, who stood by Mary and the other women. And, and they watched as Christ died, and they, along with Joseph and Nicodemus, helped take the body of Christ off the cross and bury him. The rest were afraid. They ran, they went to the upper room, they locked themselves in that room, and they did not come out. That's how fearful they were. And that's how dangerous it was say you were a believer in Christ at that time. It wasn't until the murmuring women the following day came to the tomb and found it empty and ran to the apostles and told them that Christ is not in the tomb. 
that he is risen from the dead and that he will see them in Galilee. <coughs> it's only then that they unlocked that door and came out. Now, when they were in Galilee and saw Christ on multiple occasions, they were joyful. And, and there's a good description given here. When they first saw him, they rejoiced and they were glad. They were frightened a little bit. They were amazed a little bit. And they didn't know, is this Christ? Or is this a ghost or an apparition? That's why he says in this text, after he, he says, look, it's me, I'm here. Here, see, see the wounds in my hands. See the wounds in my feet. Here, here's the wound in my side. It's me, I'm, I'm here, I'm with you. And they were still, you know, just awestruck. And then he said to them, do you have anything to eat? And they had fish. And he took it to a fish and he ate it. An apparition and a ghost doesn't eat. They can't have the fish. It's an apparition. It's, it's a ghost. So he physically was there with them. And they, were, and they rejoiced and they were glad. And he spent time with them in Galilee. And he revealed to them all of the prophecies concerning himself. And how they all were fulfilled. And uh, that how it was necessary out of his love for all of mankind that he had to go through the sufferings that he went through, and that he had to die on the cross and resurrect from the dead in order to establish us at oneness with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. After he had instructed them, he went to what we call today the Mount of Ascension, and he told them that he was going to leave them and they again became frightened. Their plea was, no, 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 Lord, don't do that. Stay with us. When you died, when you were buried in that, in that, in that tomb, we hid ourselves. We were afraid to do anything. We were afraid to even go outside. Please don't leave us. They were begging him. And he says to them, I'm not going to leave you alone. I'm going to send you the Holy Spirit. And he will be with you. And he will fulfill you. And he will be your guide. And he will put the words in your mouth that must be said. And he will instruct you in the way. And even more again, they still beg him. And he says to them, you you still don't understand. It's beneficial that I do leave you because I'm going to prepare a place for you that where I am, you also will be. Namely, his kingdom, the eternal kingdom, the kingdom that has no end, the kingdom that's described as the eye has never seen and the ear has never heard, nor has it entered into the heart of man what God has prepared for them to believe in him. So they hear his words and they watch him ascend. And they rejoice and they're glad. And they joyfully went to the temple, praising and blessing the Lord for all his wondrous works. For us, who live in such a great distance of time from when these events occur. We also celebrate this event and rejoice and we're glad and maybe too, too we're amazed at if we're pondering on what happens. Through the liturgical services of the church, we're able to relive <coughs> that event in that time and put ourselves into that time. And appreciate now, here and now, what God has done for us. Today is a, today is a wondrous, wondrous feast for us. Do you understand that your body and my body are now the temple of the Holy Spirit? 
because God has taken this body of ours. He didn't leave it in the grave to rot. He ascended back to the Father with our, with his human body. And through him, and through his grace, our bodies are now capable of being in the presence of God. Where we should have been from the very beginning of creation. Now, even if we look at it from the invisible world, the angels are rejoicing. But even more so, you know, in the incarnation, they rejoiced and they were glad and they praised God because He, the second person of the Holy Trinity, through the Virgin Mary, took human flesh for the sake of flesh didn't quite understand what was happening because angels don't have foreknowledge. The only, the only person who is omniscient is God. But they rejoiced. They saw this wonderful event taking place. Didn't quite comprehend everything because they, they couldn't. Now even here, they only knew God as a spirit. But now they see him not only as spirit joining, going back to, the, to be with the Father, who he never left, by the way, because it was a divine condescension and not a change of place. But now he takes this human body with himself to be with the Father and the Holy Spirit. He makes it possible for us to be there too. And that's why this feast day is so important to us. Because God ascended with his human body, we are now capable, through the grace of Christ, to be with God. To have him live and dwell within us, because when the Holy Spirit is in us, the kingdom is in us, and God is in us. St. Paul writes, don't you know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? Not only did the apostles go back to the temple praising and worshiping God, but we too, here and now, in this temple and outside of this temple, especially on this day, we should rejoice and praise God for all the truly magnificent and wonderful things He has done for us. Amen. Amen.